to our four-wheel drive adventure on the Karanji track. While it starts at the Gip, it's technically not part of it. Your shirt, the shape of your shadow, the rest just a blur. I try so hard to remember more. Check out this beautiful sunset just above the Pentecost River, and then in this direction, you can see the cliffs glowing. It's amazing. Well, Pop in some drone footage. Magical spot. It's a free camp, guys. Get out here! <laughs> A photograph so to not forget when I'm looking back I have no regret but even then I will find something lost to time all right everyone we are leaving our spot at the Pentecost is a nice hot night here and we are hitting the Karunji track to Wyndham. Let's go. Ready? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bouncing around already. Like 10 meters in. <laughs> Didn't even really start the track yet, but hey, it's the fun of it. <laughs> So it's said online um, that it's a, four, a difficult four-wheel drive track, you need a high clearance, but we actually met a guy that's done it yesterday from the other side, and he said it was fine. So we'll see what we got ourselves into. <laughs> we'll be bumpy, I reckon. The Karunji track is an old stock route and takes you from the Pentecost River to Wyndham. This non-gazetted road takes you along the northern edges of the Coburn Range, providing some spectacular views you wouldn't get to see from the Gib. Pretty rocky, bumpy track. Some big boulders, that's probably why they said high clearance. So you don't destroy anything, your diffs or something. <laughs> and it gets better and better. and we've read about this and it says we have to stay on the track because it's all private land 
and yeah no camping and no fires so yeah stay on the track don't do anything silly <laughs> the view it is amazing and the, the vegetation seems to be getting less and less so there's less trees smaller shrubs and eventually we get to the mud flats oh yeah that will be sick
slide Oh, it's what I'm here for Say I'll never waste my time on all you can Oh, is the barrier between Digger's cattle and El Cuestro cattle which shows you how big El Cuestro station is the property is massive I think it's 700,000 acres is the Karunji track everyone so don't know exactly how far it was I'd say probably around 60k the middle is over the mud flats it's super easy nice going and the rest is all this kind of rocky bumpy stuff with washouts and like dry creek crossings you have to go over it's a pretty fun track nothing you know really really crazy um, a couple of nice inclines to go up and stuff but one little tip as you're going along, you'll see all of these little signs that'll tell you where you're going. So if you follow these arrows, you should find the right way. We did it! He's telling you all about it, I reckon. <laughs> Look how he's holding the camera in his face. There's not heaps of tracks to follow, but there are a couple of turnoffs, especially when you get to gates. Usually just follow the one that has the most looks like it's being used the most should get you to the end uh, yeah so the middle part took us no time at all and the front like this section here and the front section at the Pentecost probably a good at least half an hour 45 minutes each yeah fun track check it out if you can all right Yele what'd you think well it was very bumpy heaps of washouts it was wild but the section with the mud flats in front of the cliffs, that was amazing. Yeah, it's really cool. We'll definitely pop yeah. the drone footage in. And all the cows and kangaroos and birds, so it was cool. Yeah. So if you're planning on taking your Unimog through, this track is most definitely wide enough for it. Yeah. Even the camper, like our camper box is 380 high. We barely had to scrape or break a couple tree branches. Um, but yeah, it's always always wide enough. There's no really extreme angles. Well, there um, is a few, but there's we a couple like big ups and downs. And but angles, no, Patrick. But we really got used to it. Yeah, but yeah, it, it's definitely doable in a in a uni mall, even with a camper box on the back. Just be ready to get some pinstripes. We already have ours, so. And we are back on the dirt road. So this dirt road takes us back to the highway and yeah, to, the to the Boeb prison tree so it's another 3.9 kilometers we made it to the other prison tree so we've been to the one in Derby and now we're in the east one check it out it's massive Patrick looks like a little ant. <laughs> so they're usually hollow. We've got this little hole. Oh my god, this one was hot. It's been angry, Cliff. 
But I think, did they put the prisoners in there? Sometimes they put them in there, but usually this was the last night camp before getting back to Wyndham, when they put them in jail in Wyndham. Jump in, Patrick. Uh, no. Looks a bit snaky. Yeah. <laughs> I find these boabs so fascinating because if you touch the branches and stuff, they're super, almost rubbery. Like, they bend easily, they won't break. As soon as you get to an older part of the tree, it's like a tree, like hard wood again. And the trunk, like the big base of the tree itself is also very hard and rough. It's cool how it just changes like that. Like, Sidetrack which led to a dam which is called Muchalabra Dam. <laughs> it's a drinking water catchment and for Wyndham. For Wyndham, yeah. And on the same side road there is some Aboriginal cave paintings that we're gonna have a look at next. So we're here on these salt flats and while these might look firm, so if you step on this, it seems hard, but you can actually see, and people have tried to drive in here. Here, I'll show you an example. As soon as you break the crust, this happens. You can see here, it gets pretty soft underneath. So, when you're driving across a salt lake, or a salt flat, or a mud flat, stick to the track. It's been compacted by lots of cars going over it, which kind of squeezes the moisture out, keeps it all nice and hard. That way, you don't go down. And usually, on salt flats or mud flats, there's nothing to winch off of. So, you don't want to get stuck there. <laughs> After over two weeks, we have to inflate our tires again, which we don't like very much. It takes a while, but it's good to be in civilization kind of again. We'll go to Wynnum now and check out a few places there, and then you'll see where we go next. <laughs> we will show you around Wyndham and guess what our tires don't stay inflated for long We're